Milder? According to Baijin, the leaf showed residual fluctuations of tacit discords. Those fluctuations pointed to a certain set of coordinates. And that is... Tisha Village and the Central Plains. Guess you won't need my self-introduction. Oh, I spent... Protect. Everyone stand down. and resolute. I got your back. Let's take it slow. This must be the place. I sense something ominous from the leaf back there, but I couldn't pinpoint its source. And now, the hatred and pain is so strong in this place, I don't even... Hatred and pain is so strong in this place. 
I don't even need to concentrate to feel it. Grover, something terrible must have happened here. We have to be cautious. This is a tacit field. Let's take out those tacit discords first. Steady there. Transmitting frequency. Embracing change. Swift and resolute. I got your back. Embracing change. Rejuvenating snow. I got your back. Victory, guide my blade! <laughs> How reliable. Swift and resolute. Moment of resonance. Ritualistic wooden plaques. But why are they here? These plaques are usually placed in ancestral shrines, and they seem to belong to a different time. I remember reading about something like this. People held large-scale ancient rituals periodically in their villages, driven by certain beliefs. I see. Let's check somewhere else. Watch out! not right. Why wouldn't it attack us? <sighs> Brother. <sighs> Help. Help. Brother. Br Brother. Help. Help. <sighs> Help. Help. It seems to only repeat these lines. This is not a common tacit discord. Tacit discords attack other living beings because they need to feed on those frequencies to make themselves whole again. When frequencies are scattered and recombined, a new tacit discord is born. This one probably devoured the frequencies of Humans, turning the last bits of a human's consciousness into such monotonous mumbles. Are these words the last cries of someone innocent? Who is behind this twisted plot? I'm sorry. No, that's beyond my ability. I just sensed some complex feelings from it. A mixture of deep sadness and eager anticipation. Rover, I think I know what's going on here. It seems to be begging for help. 
but it's not asking us to help it. I can sense the pained cries of this tacit discord. No. The cries of this whole village. The village is crying, waiting for rescue. Something truly awful must have happened here. And the victim's reverberations still linger based on the evidence we've found and the condition of these ruins. That didn't happen all too long ago. I can still feel it in the streams. Perhaps the tacit field has kept this village from being discovered. Or maybe someone has been intentionally concealing it. Anyway, there must be something we can do. We may find the victims nearby. I can feel someone connected to what happened here is still close. This place is dangerous. I'll inform Chuzia about what happened here. Can we continue our search before the official investigators arrive? Sorry, I know it doesn't sound very convincing. It's just a hunch of mine, and I don't have any evidence to back it up. Thank you, Rover. Please stay vigilant. As for the little one here... Let's leave it be. The area is a mess, but it doesn't look like a war zone. Someone was hurt and dragged away. Look, there are many footprints here. These are traces left by a fight. Someone was injured. These cards. Ah, uh, I see. The Fraxidus is likely behind it all. The Fraxidus? Yes. I don't know much about the Fraxidus, but as an outrider, I've worked on related cases. It's a group of extremists obsessed with fusing humans with tacit discords. They've caused terror attacks of various scales around the world. Fusing humans and tacit discords. We've seen signs of their presence in Jinzhou, left by lower-ranked members called Artificers. Above the Artificers are the Overseers, Leaders with eerie abilities and unknown intentions. They pose a far bigger threat. No one knows their true intentions. Some members speak of world destruction, while others claim they seek eternal power. And there is one particularly insane overseer. He's crazy even by Fraxida's standards. A man who sees no order and revels in destruction. I've seen similar cards in the physical evidence file of the Fraxidus-related cases. They belong to this one overseer I'm talking about. They call him... Scar. If he's responsible for what happened to these villagers, who knows what kind of cruel and twisted atrocities he's capable of. Guess you won't need my self-introduction. Oh, I spent... If you need to hear it from me, then yes, I am Scar. Cruel and twisted maniac.
We deserve a meeting free of such disturbances, don't you agree? The girl, she's gonna sway your judgment. Don't worry. I don't plan to make you hate me just yet. She is safe now. Well, let's just enjoy our time together for the moment. Forget about that irrelevant person, will you? I have a lot to share with you. To begin with, I heard you've lost your memories. <laughs> Indeed, I'll tell you then. Before you knew anything about this world, you were already the center of conflict. You are the unknown variable we've been waiting for. Forces have been fighting for possession over you. From the moment you opened your eyes, everyone you've met, including that girl you care so much about, they all knew how valuable you are. The world is a cruel place. You are a living, breathing person, but you're just a pawn to many. That's why I'm here, because I see you as a dear friend, and I want to tell you the truth. I am so, so sorry for everything you're about to face. But truth hurts sometimes. You could say I'm looking forward to your choice. My goal is simple. I just want to deepen our mutual understanding, nothing more. Come on. Observe the surroundings a little more and tell me what you see. As you learn more about this world, your true desires will surface, and our little game will become even more entertaining. And before that, I don't want anyone to disturb my precious alone time with you. That's all. Ah, uh, why do you have to assume we are the culprits? Maybe you should be asking me what actually happened here. I won't tell you everything just yet. That's too boring. As I said, why don't you take a look around and see for yourself? So go ahead. What do you see? Bravo! Didn't think you'd catch on to that. Now, what is the conclusion you've drawn? Ah, how typical. The age-old tale of savage wolves and helpless lambs. Good and evil as clear as day. It's a tired story that people cling to in their mundane lives. Oh, how it keeps them in check. But let me ask you this. Do you truly believe the real world can be that simple? Let me give you a couple more tips. The truth is far more complicated than you think. First, who are the players in our tale? An innocent girl, a revered leader, and a flock of simple villagers. Next, what makes up our main plot? False devotion, fleeting kindness, collective deceit, senseless killings, and the one vulnerable soul pushed onto a path of destruction by the masses. Now, Rover, the story is yours to spin. 
I'm eager to hear your version after you've learned more. Our story begins here. Once upon a time in a peaceful village lived a flock of carefree lambs. In the day they toiled for food, and when evening fell, they sought refuge from the looming threat of wolves. Fables, stories told and retold through the ages. The ancient art of conveying hidden truths through fiction. But they always draw from real life, don't they? The same story gets told by many, and each person brings their own spin, their own focus. Whatever you learn from it is just one of countless different interpretations, like us now, caught in a carefully crafted plotline a scheme I had no hand in. This village marks the beginning of my story with Jinjo. <laughs> so that magistrate led you here to meet me. Ha! <sighs> Such a clever move on her part. One day, a shepherd visited the village. The shepherd brought them promises of abundance and protection. The lambs, drawn in by his words, soon lived in comfort and security. No, nope, quite the opposite. The shepherd's arrival is only the beginning. With a wave of his hand, the shepherd could grant their every wish. His flock obeyed, bowing their heads, pleading for better food and shelter. They no longer had to struggle for survival, as their once meager lives were replaced with endless luxury. The flock worshipped their shepherd-turned-god, praising him and holding him in the highest regard. What's wrong? Does my story make you uncomfortable? 
Imagine you were one of those lambs, facing irresistible temptation and pressure from your peers. Wouldn't you bow down and beg for food from your master? Oh, so we agree already. You are right, but the world we live in falls short of our ideals. The shepherd still reigns, and the lambs have grown complacent. It's up to the two of us to make that ideal world a reality. The lambs reveled in endless bonfire parties, celebrating their new god every night. Except the one little black lamb. As each night passed, it was the only one to notice how its flock was dwindling away. Rover, do you think someone would give you what you want without taking anything from you? <laughs> I once believed that too. Thought as long as I paid a high enough price, I could get my desired outcome. But true equality is scarce, always has been. The world was never a fair place, wouldn't you agree? To receive equal retribution, one must give more and more. And more. When every wish comes with a hefty price, people weigh their options carefully. But when they can make someone else bear the price, they all rush to make more wishes. They don't consider they too may one day pay for another's selfish desire. Funny, isn't it? Later, the shepherd openly blamed the black lamb for the flock's decline. On the next day, the white lambs welcomed the rising sun as usual, but the black lamb was nowhere to be found. The shepherd introduced an unspoken rule to this village, one that our black lamb violated by telling the truth. Suddenly, the once doting god stopped fulfilling wishes because no more sacrifices were being made. After witnessing the Black Lamb's actions and hearing from their almighty shepherd, what do you suppose the White Lambs did? Ah, those oblivious lambs. Little did they know the most fearsome demon was right under their noses. Well done. You didn't let any detail slip. Now, I wonder, what is your takeaway from this story? Answer me and I'll reveal the truth of what happened. Who was the real culprit behind the diminishing number of lambs? Indeed. The direct culprit was the shepherd. 
He held all the power, fulfilling wishes at a price. The lambs knew the risks, yet succumbed to temptation. Unfortunately, in the face of such temptation, they disregarded all the hidden risks, as disaster had yet to befall them. If they were given another chance, I believe they would still choose the same path. Inevitably, they accepted their fate and paid the price when their time came. Now, my second question. What price did the lambs pay for their wishes? Of course, as always, life was the most valuable thing they had to offer. Here's my final question. What happened to the black lamb? Ah, 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 ah. Don't rush, Rover. Take your time. What is the truth you've uncovered? The shepherd was granting wishes by sacrificing the lives of lambs. The flock never found out about it. Someone came to their rescue, and they all made it out alive. <laughs> really? Oh, you're such a good little lamb. So innocent, so sweet. Do you really believe a hero would show up and save the day? Little lambs cowered and huddled in their village, terrified of the relentless wolf packs. Until a shepherd arrived, bearing the gift of wishes and providing shelter and sustenance. Slowly, the shepherd gained control over the flock, and the lambs lived contented lives. But this is not the end of our story. The shepherd found the solitary black lamb in his flock and offered to grant any wish it desired. In exchange, he wanted one of its companions as a sacrifice. The black lamb refused and it was shunned by its flock, left without shelter or sustenance. After the black lamb's exile, more lambs continued to vanish. The shepherd then blamed the black lamb for breaking the rules and withheld his wish-granting power as punishment. From the very beginning, the lambs knew the risk of making wishes. They too could become sacrifices for those of others. But they always believed it wouldn't be them. Meanwhile, some lambs reasoned that since they had already risked being sacrificed for someone else's wish, it was then only fair to pass on that risk for a chance at fulfilling their own desires. And so they continued to play the game. They all knew the consequences, but chose to remain silent. Fearful, yet greedy, they followed the shepherd's orders and made wishes again and again. Until one day, a brave black lamb spoke up, shattering the flock's facade, their illusion of a peaceful and happy life. The black lamb got in their way, and that of the shepherd's greedy pursuit, sparking hatred in their hearts. Suddenly, they could no longer ignore the blood and ashes of past sacrifices littering the ground.
How do you like my story, Rover? What really happened here, I suppose you already have it figured out? The Black Lamb who rebelled against the rules, and the White Lambs who succumbed to their greed. The innocent maiden sacrificed, and the villagers who turned on each other in a ruthless frenzy. They had it coming. All the shepherd had to do was execute the rebel. That's how he kept the flock in check and maintained the status quo. Fun answer, but no. Not even close. I was never the shepherd. Never will be. You and I, we are the Black Lamb. The one who breaks the rules. <laughs> Interesting, Rover. <laughs> I'm liking you more and more. Well then, let's see if this black lamb is going to end up like you say. Welcome to the realm of endless chaos. Now is your time to think, Rover. What is the right path to take? Oh, you found us already. Shake and shiver, blink an eye. A flock of lambs comes passing by. Fleece of white, black, and red. Who's the sweetest one? Watch out, my dear. Your pioneers are lying at your feet. Don't look back. Join them on this right path. Uh-uh-uh, don't rush. One slip and you'll shatter to pieces. Such brutality! <laughs> Can't you see? We are kindred spirits after all. <laughs> Tell me, do you want to be the rule setting shepherd or the rule breaking black lamb? If a sane person manages to survive in a realm of lunatics, would you call them the last one of reason? Or the sole apostle? Think about it! The shepherd is not the preordained embodiment of truth. Once he is gone for good, the Black Lamb can reclaim the trust of its herd. Then, eventually, there will be none left to be victims or Oppressors! Sound. The hour is upon us. I got your back. This is my ground. Rover! I shattered Scar's illusion that should have injured him. Oh! Should I thank you for showing me mercy? Stay away from her! Uh, 
Didn't you promise to leave me some alone time with Rover? With one condition. I do hope you haven't let that slip from your mind. Don't let your improvisation trouble others. <laughs> Look at you, rushing in to protect your precious, perfect movement. No worries. I know all the do's and don'ts. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Rover, it seems our happy little date must come to an end. But don't forget my sincere reminders. Let me know what you choose. An unexpected gift? An honest and open exchange? Or a highly risky gamble? The choice is yours. I know how smart you are. You won't make a hasty decision. We'll meet again in the not too distant future. They're gone. Should we go after them? Scar's resonance abilities appear to involve teleportation and the manipulation of space. He trapped me in confinement and I could only sense that it wasn't far from here. It took me some time to break that barrier. Sorry, Rover. If only I could have reached you sooner. <laughs> Brother. Brother. Huh? Why are you here, little one? I've never seen any tacit discord display such vivid emotions. The brother had mentioned. Could it be... Yes, that is a possibility. Since Scar had been here before, let's talk about it later. Rover, can you fill me in on what happened? It seems all the tragedies in Tichi Village were linked to that ritual. Making up stories based on real life to support his twisted beliefs? That does sound like something he might do. We cannot take his words for granted. Now, we must locate where the ritual took place and see for ourselves. Hmm, what's the matter? Two distinct frequencies of tacit discords. I see. I can feel it in the streams. Over there. Follow me. In the south. They are unharmed. Please rest assured. As you anticipated, Scar did not try to kill them. Yes, I stayed out of it like you asked. Is everything all right on your end? Please be sure to stay safe, my lady. Rover, do you still have the plaque we found earlier? The one broken in half. Yes, as I thought. I just felt a similar vibration from that direction. Please follow me. the missing half. We can piece them together now. Water is going. 
going down. I can't believe it. There is such a big open. I can't believe. I can't believe. I can't believe it. There is such a big opening down here. How odd. This place should have been soaked in water, but everything is dry here. Even the vegetation is thriving. Hmm. Did Scar do this? Given his powers, it doesn't seem too hard for him. That tree... It's stunning. It's almost eerily enchanting. Please, save us. Are you trying to tell us about something hidden here? Where did it go? Oh, is that a... That girl just wanted to save her village. But those sacrifices didn't lead to redemption. I guess the tacit discord we saw stayed here to convey her last wishes. Please excuse me. It's getting a bit too cold here. Can we head back now? Sorry, Rover. I didn't feel comfortable down there. The air was heavy in that place, without any wind to speak of. But I could still feel so many emotions and desperate cries for help. I... I couldn't handle it. The villagers were a complex mix of emotions. Hope, resentment, and despair. And as I read the diary, I could feel the intense sorrow and longing of its owner. What was the diary's owner longing for? Was it the peaceful life she once had? Or did she miss her only family? The person who pushed her towards such a tragic end? My apologies. I got lost in thoughts again. I wish I could say such tragedies won't happen again. But I still lack the confidence to make that claim. It was tragedies like this that made me want to become an outrider. 
to become someone with the strength to stop them from ever happening again. I cannot stop the lament. But at least I should do everything in my power to help those affected by it. Really? Thank you, Rover. Dwelling on it won't do us any good. Let's go. I'll compile a report on what happened here and send it in along with the clues we've gathered. Yes, let's go back. Together, 